In this tutorial I'm going to show you how you can create these surface imperfections in 3.js to make your renderings and materials more interesting. Let's jump right into it. So here we are in the scene. I already created a 3.js tutorial where I explained some other stuff that is definitely also worth checking out. So uh, I link to that tutorial in the description. So if you find something missing here, make sure to check that other tutorial out as well in case I already talked about some of the stuff I'm skipping over here. Um, there's also another uh, cool thing that I'm gonna talk about in the very end, so stick around. But uh, for the moment, I'm gonna talk about these surface imperfections that I'm using here and how you can easily create this yourself. It's like a very subtle, or not, not a subtle thing visually, but it's very easy to create, but it can, can drastically um, improve, I think, the style and the quality of your renderings. So briefly again, um, in the HTML, there's nothing much to mention here. That's just uh, SVG stuff for the icons I'm showing down here. And I'm creating a canvas um, where I'm importing the canvas from the JavaScript um, portion of the, uh, of the code. So um, you don't really need any anything here, you can just copy paste it and just make sure to import the canvas here. Uh, same in the CSS, there's nothing much to mention here. I'm just uh, scaling, uh, oh, there's a, an error here. I'm just scaling uh, the canvas here. Uh, so again, um, not much to mention, you can just copy paste it. Um, and the more interesting part now starts with the JavaScript as is usually the case. So I am importing a lot of stuff here. I'm just going to briefly um, go over it. We obviously import 3.js. Um, we also import the RGB uh, e loader that is for the HDR, so the um, environment light. Then I'm importing the effect, effect composer, render pass, after image, Unreal Bloom. These are all the effects. And uh, importantly, also the FBX loader so that we can import a 3D model. Uh, again, uh, this is all the stuff I already talked about in the other tutorials. So I'm going to go uh, through this very quickly. We create a renderer, we set a background color. So if you want to change the background color, you can do that here. Um, we set the pixel ratio, just copy paste stuff. And we set the renderer size, everything. Uh, stuff that you will copy paste um, just in basically every scene. So then we get to the HDR. This is the environment light. I explained this in more depth in the other tutorial as well. But um, just to uh, let you know that uh, this is very important to set the general mood of the scene. So this is gonna be what uh, sets the color. So if we're gonna change this, for example, I have another one in here that is four, um, my gradient number four. So um, yeah, this one does, ah, this now it looks very different. Um, you can already see, or maybe I have another one uh, that might look different again. So my version number five, for example, so this gives it uh, a different look. So if you want to change the color by changing the environment, uh, you can do that in here. So let's get uh, back to the one before though, because I think you can see the effect best in here. Then we are, for one, we are setting the environment to the scene. Uh, that is nothing new. And we create a fog. Again, I explained this in more detail in the other tutorial. If you want to know about that, uh, check that out. We create a camera and the point lights. The point lights are actually very important for this scene. So uh, in order to show you more, um, to better show you what is happening with the point lights, I'm going to turn on these uh, point light helpers. So you can um, uh, press control or command and the slash um, button or key and then you can uncomment uh, multiple lines in code pen. That's important to know. And now you can see uh, here these um, uh, things flying around. Um, they're supposed to be uh, spheres, but um, very low poly spheres. Um, so uh, there you can see what is happening with the light. To see it better, we have to zoom a little bit out. So I'm going out with or further back with the camera position Z. And now we can barely see um, the mask uh, simply because the fog is too extreme. But now you can see the uh, lights better. So the lights are basically rotating around. So we always have like two different angles for the lights. Uh, and there's like basically one key light that is in front and then we have the other one coming from the side and the back. So it's rotating around um, the mask. I think this really makes, makes a difference. Uh, in general with your scenes, you should always consider lighting. Lighting is like one of the most important things to make 3D renderings more interesting. And in this case, 
particularly because we have the surface imperfection, so you can better see like uh, the imperfections in the material. Um, I'm going to show you later how to animate that. Um, you can see it in the code in the animation later, but this is just to demonstrate this. So let's move back in with the camera position Z. Uh, again, as in the other scene here, the camera position Y um, I think is overwritten anyway. So that doesn't really do anything here, but um, it's just like a backup uh, in case you're going to turn off the animation, for example. And then we already get to uh, the bread and butter, basically, of surface imperfections. So first we are defining a texture loader here. So we create a new uh, 3D texture loader that allows us to import our um, surface imperfection texture. So here I'm having a variable, uh, surf imp, just as a short form for surface imperfection, but you can call it wherever you want. Then we have the load function for the texture and here is the texture I'm using right now. And then we just wrap it around. Uh, so that basically wraps it around, um, oops, uh, wraps it around the um, model that you put the material on. Um, so you can basically copy paste that and just put your uh, texture in here. About the texture, I'm just gonna quickly show you how that uh, kind of texture looks like. Uh, this is surface imperfection too. So um, we can see here, um, basically like this, uh, we can see the uh, texture. So it's a grayscale that is important to note. So um, I'm, I don't, I don't want to say something wrong. Uh, let me check it again. So um, the dark areas are less rough and the white areas are more rough. So um, what is dark is what is less rough. Um, you will see that later again, but uh, this is basically the texture that we are using here. And um, you can use basically any, uh, you can basically um, use any, um, any grayscale image. So for example, I have these fingerprints um, that I can put in here. That's also grayscale um, texture. So now we can see the fingerprints on the mask. In this case, it doesn't look so great. In other scenes, it might look better. So just um, check for any interesting grayscale um, grayscale uh, textures you can find. And you can basically go on Google and look for something like free fingerprint texture, for example. And then you can find this one, um, for example. And this is just uh, grayscale. Uh, texture you can get to put in here and you will have basically fingerprints on your material, which is pretty cool. So we still have to put this into a material. I already talked a lot about the material part of it, but for the moment we only have the texture. So we create a new material that is a mesh physical material. You have to check that you use the type of material that takes roughness and that can take a roughness map. And here we just set the color. We put it to white in this case because we want the reflections uh, from the environment light. So if we put this to like a very dark gray, for example, it would reflect less. So we wouldn't see much, um, as you can see here. That might be something that you try to create, but in my case, I'm gonna go back to a white color so we get all the reflections. In this case, I'm putting the roughness to one because I want to really highlight the surface imperfections, but we could make it more subtle by putting it to like 0.5. And now you will see it's much more shiny and the surface imperfections are more subtle. Um, obviously, if we put this to zero, they completely disappear and then we only have the metalness. But um, yeah, so that's not what we want, at least not in this tutorial. I really like it with the one and one, with the metalness at one as well, because now it looks really like this uh, grungy kind of metal look. Before we keep going, just a quick reminder that you can tremendously support my work by liking this video, subscribing to the channel and following me on Instagram. The more people interact with my work, the more videos I will create. With that, let's get back to the tutorial. So um, the other thing that we can do is actually reduce the metalness. So if we reduce uh, the metalness, um, just let me quickly check this here. Uh, if we reduce the metalness, we get to this more plasticky kind of look. So now I think it, this would be interesting as well if you want to create something that looks more like plastic, for example. Uh, we can put it all the way to zero, so we would basically have like this kind of uh, very rough plastic kind of look. Uh, again, in my case, I like the kind of... Um, yeah, grungy metal look, so I like to have it, have it at roughness one and metalness one. 
then we import our object, nothing crazy going on here. Just make sure that you actually assign the material to your object. So in this case, I'm importing a mask, but um, you can also import um, other kind of um, other kind of uh, objects. It doesn't really make a difference in principle. So for example, let me import a different model in here just to show you that it kind of looks cool with everything. So this is my two hands, I call it. We have to scale it down, I already know that, and then we put the position to zero so we can actually see it. Right, so now you have these hands with this kind of grunginess uh, to it, with this grungy metalness. So that's really, really cool as well. I think you can use it with a lot of different objects and you can, you can basically use this as a general style for your renderings. Uh, for example, if you're working on a web project, you might want to add this to like all kinds of different um, objects. Uh, for example. So now we are already going to the post-processing. So this is basically the most important setup uh, already. And uh, here again, I explained this in more depth in the other tutorial. So check that out if you want to understand what is happening here. Um, but the thing that I did not mention, and that is my kind of gimmick uh, for, for this tutorial, what I didn't mention in the uh, last uh, tutorial is the uh, pixel pass. Um, so that is kind of a gimmick I have in uh, all or at least most of my CodePen projects. Um, so if you gonna just comment out this uh, add pass to the composer, we get this pixel shader in here. Here are the values so you can um, change the pixel size uh, as well. And this basically gives you this kind of pixel art look, which I think is really cool. Like uh, you have to find uh, the right use case for it. Um, but I think it has has a really cool look to it. Uh, so that's kind of the um, gimmick for uh, this episode. But uh, then again, you're not going to see the surface imperfection. So maybe not for this scene, but uh, you might want to use that for other scenes. So you can just copy paste it and uh, import it into your next project. Again, here is uh, just a copy paste code for the resize function. And here I'm just defining a new value, a theta one, so that I put at zero. So now we can uh, talk a little bit about uh, the animation. So the camera position is um, just this, um, yeah, how, how are you gonna call that? This panning around. Uh, so the object doesn't really move at all. Um, or it does not move at all, but only the camera is moving around uh, the object so that it looks like this. Again, this together with the light helps to kind of get more contrast and like kind of highlight the surface imperfection. Importantly, you still have to keep the camera look at at zero, zero, zero in this case. So it keeps looking at the same position and doesn't like randomly move around, but it keeps the focus on the object uh, that we have here. And um, if you want to move something around, uh, like I showed you before, we can quickly turn this on again just for demonstration purposes if we uh, turn on the point light helper again um, we can better see what's going on so here we have the point light and the point light two and they are moving around in circles that is on the x and the z axis so we have this combination of a sine function and a cos function and together they basically make it move around uh, the center point, and then I also have this kind of uh, movement on the y-axis to make it even a bit more interesting. And uh, importantly here, they are not uh, the same thing. So you can see when the uh, one point light is down, the other one is up. So we have here the uh, start position at plus three and at minus six. And uh, then we have here basically the negation of um, this equation for the position. So this makes it go around uh, like I showed you before. So uh, that is basically already it. Um, let's move back into the scene as we had it at first. So let's comment this out and move back in to see the mask actually. And um, right, that's already it. Then we just have the uh, on window resize function again, copy paste code and the function animate again, also copy paste code, make sure that the composer is in there so that the composer is rendered for every frame and call the update function and request the animation frame. And that is basically it. That is the whole scene. Uh, it's, it's really simple. It has a great impact on the look of your material and the look of your renderings. And it's super easy. You can use any grayscale texture, maybe find something uh, different, interesting. You can also have something like a stains, for example, like um, uh, dried 
uh, dried water or something like that, which also leaves this kind of uh, roughness residue. Uh, so you can you can put in a lot of different stuff, and uh, that's basically it. And I think it, it really makes a difference. So if you enjoyed the tutorial, make sure to give a thumbs up and to subscribe to my channel. And um, if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments and I will uh, hopefully be able to reply to them. And if you have any requests for further tutorials, I'm uh, very, um, yeah, you're very welcome to, to write that in the comments as well so I can create new tutorials in the future. And also make sure to follow me on Instagram. Uh, the link uh, to everything is in the description. You find the link to the code in the description. You find the link to the old tutorial and to my uh, social media. And um, that's basically it. Uh, I hope you uh, learned something new and I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye.